What is up guys? Today I'm going to be covering my top three tips on developing a bigger chest. And this is one of those body parts which everyone wants to develop, but I think far too many people struggle to develop it. So I'm going to run through everything that I would personally tell all my clients in order to get the most out of developing their chest. Now, number one, hands down, has to be execution of the movement itself. And this sounds silly, but the first thing I'll say to anybody I'm working with is, look at our program. What is the purpose of this exercise? What are we trying to achieve? For example, an incline press machine. We are clearly trying to hit our upper chest. So we need to make sure that our mind to muscle connection is hitting our upper chest. Now, far too many people, and I've been there in my early days, working the shoulder way too far forward. So getting a lot of protraction. And a great tip is put your hand on your chest. Now with your other hand, do the press. So if you just work your arm forward and then let your arm collapse back, you'll find that your chest is doing nothing at all. It's not firing up. Now, a great tip to focus on with all chest movements is you want your scapula pinned back and from here, I want you to imagine that you're gonna keep your shoulders pinned down on the bench and back, and you've got a pencil. So this pen here, you're gonna imagine that we're attracted back, you're gonna keep your shoulders back, and you're gonna drive in and squeeze. Now, if you touch your pec here, you'll see that it's fully shortened and contracted. So this way, we're getting tension through the length and range as we row and retract back, keep the shoulder back, and then get that squeeze and contraction. Now, if you're executing all of your movements, with this level of precision and mind to muscle connection, your chest is going to grow because we've got tension where we need it. Just always having a conscious effort rather than just pressing or flying a weight is gonna have a huge impact on physique development. Now intensity and tempo also tie into this. So if we're training chest, executing it really well, but there's no intensity there at all, we will probably not grow that chest. Now, I'm not saying to start out with, you've got to go flat out and train till complete failure and completely ruin yourself, but training to a minimum of at least three reps in reserve of failure is going to be key when developing chest. That way we've got enough stimulus to grow. Now, tempo also ties into this. So if we were executing a movement really well, but we're traveling way too fast, we're actually missing out on a lot of time under tension. Now, I would always say with pressing movements, a tempo of three, one, 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 which effectively means three seconds eccentric as the chest fibers lengthen, a slight transition so we're not bouncing in the bottom, which is gonna prevent injury, but also allow us to keep more tension. One on that concentric and then one squeeze in the pec here. That's gonna be optimal for tension. Now with a fly movement, I like the tempo of four, one, two, one. Now, this will consist of four seconds back, lengthen in the pec, and we can get away with this slower tempo because we usually go in higher reps and higher volume. Now, from here, one second in the bottom, again, eliminating that bounce, two seconds driving in, and one second holding that squeeze. Again, if we are executing with intensity, with four mind to muscle connection, getting a great contraction, we are going to grow our chest. It is just a fact. Second tip and piece of advice is exercise selection. Now, I've been there in the past and I see it all the time, especially in gyms back in the UK, in the commercial gyms, you'll see the lads running into the gym and they'll run straight for the flat bench press. And in my opinion, it's the biggest mistake you could make. Now, I'm not saying this is a useless exercise. When executed very well, it is still quite good at its job. However, these days with the pieces of kit in the gym and other options, there are far more efficient ways to develop your chest and reduce your chance of injury. So for me, there are three elements. We've got compound movements, which is going to consist for me of machine presses and then dumbbell presses. Now a combination of the two or just machine presses will work great. I would usually be looking at executing these between rep ranges of six to 12 and just working on progression with strength. Now, this is all down to what machines that you've actually got access to. So there are some great pieces of kit which you know allow, allow us to converge in a press, so effectively start wide and come narrower. These are great for that mind to muscle connection of getting the pec fired up. Now, some of us may not have access to this sort of kit. Now, Smith machines are great. Flat or inclined machine presses are great. And then 
flat and inclined dumbbell press is also going to be a really good movement when done well. I just find that the output you can get in a machine when we're trying to train for strength between that six to 12 rep range is going to be optimal for one, reducing our chance of injury, but two, getting maximal output. Now, cables are another element that I would always be including in your programming for chess. And I think they're probably the most underused piece of kit. Now, the great thing about cables is this. When we use a cable, we have tension on the pec or the muscle that we're training at hand throughout the full range of movement. When we're training with free weights or with machines, it's good. However, it has a load profile, which means that effectively, if we're on a press, when we're in this range of the movement, we've got maximal tension. But at the top, the pec is actually under very little tension. It's almost relaxed. Now with a cable, we have constant tension throughout. So the squeeze at the top is gonna to be putting a lot of pressure through the chest and so is that retraction on the eccentric phase. So tension throughout. Now, sternal presses, so that would be a seated cable chest press, standing cable chest press, costal and clavicular cuffed flies, D-handle flies. These are all great movements to isolate your chest and have constant tension throughout. Personally, with cable movements, I like to train these between 10 and 20 reps, depending on the profile itself. So flies, most likely 15 to 20, and the press is 10 to 15. I would also include a costal cuff fly in with the presses. 10 to 15 reps is gonna be pretty optimal, so we can get the most out of that. Now finally, fly variations. And again, I see people running for the dumbbell fly. Now, if this is all you've got access to, that's fine, and it will be better than not doing it. However, these days, most gyms have pieces of kit such as pec decks, We've got cables again where we can do fly variations and these are going to allow us to get constant tension through the pec in a lengthened and shortened position. So I would be executing these at 15 to 25 reps, even including giant sets of up to 40 reps. This way we can get a lot of volume into our pec in that fly movement. Now my final piece of advice when it comes to growing your chest is actually making sure that we've got enough volume to train it. Now, a lot of guys are going around the gym, training bro split, you know, hitting chest once a week. Now, if your priority is to grow a muscle group, regardless of whether it's chest or not, you need to be training it more than once. So I would always say for a muscle group that you're trying to bring up or prioritize, two to three times a week is going to be optimal. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you train it two or three times a week. It all depends on how frequent you can train and what split you're training with. However, I would always look at having at least 16 plus working sets for a muscle group that you're trying to bring up. So 16 to 20 working sets initially is gonna be brilliant for bringing up a muscle group. Whether you had that split across two sessions or split across three, it doesn't matter. So the key is we've got enough volume to grow, enough stimulus to actually develop the pec, so we've got muscle damage that can be repaired, but we're also not training it and not recovering. So we don't wanna be training it four or five times a week breaking down tissue whilst training and not having the ability to repair and recover from it. Now, I promise you, if you actually go away and you implement this advice and you don't just let it come in one ear, float out the other, you will 100% develop your chest with just these three pieces of advice. If you want me to help you with your whole physique development journey, what you can do is apply to work with me via the link in my bio, whether that's on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, and I will get back in touch with you very shortly. What we can do at that point is then book you in for a free roadmap call and we can sit down, analyze where your physique is and where we wanna take it. And what we can do then is plan out a skeleton plan, a roadmap of exactly what we need to do phase by phase to get your physique development exactly where you want it. Now guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've taken a lot of value from it. It's not a long one, but it is very packed with value. And there is no question that you will develop your chest if you implement all of this. So please do. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you like, please make sure you subscribe. The frequency of these videos is gonna be getting pumped right up from an educational value, from a vlog value, from a lifestyle value. So please do make sure that you subscribe. If you haven't already got me followed on Instagram, do at Tom D. Pearson, and I will speak to you all very soon.